you know that the state is five minutes late.
Buenas tardes a todos y todas. Doy inicio a la audiencia número 29 del 188 periodo ordinario de sesiones de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos con el título Base Legislativa para los Derechos de las Personas Indígenas y Tribales en Surinam. Esta audiencia fue solicitada por la Asociación de Líderes gracias, líderes de Aldeas Indígenas de Surinam. Campos, colaboración de los pueblos tribales en Surinam. Internacional de los Derechos de los Pueblos Indígenas. Mi nombre es Esmeralda Arosemena de Troitiño, primera vicepresidenta de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. Tengo la responsabilidad de la Relatoría para los Derechos de los Pueblos Indígenas y también la Relatoría para los Derechos de los Niños, Niñas y Adolescentes. Me acompañan en esta oportunidad el comisionado Carlos Bernal, comisionado para las personas, tiene su, a su cargo la Relatoría para las Personas con Discapacidad. Igualmente, me acompaña el Relator Especial para la Libertad de Expresión, Pedro Vaca, y la Secretaria Ejecutiva de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, Tania Renault. Quiero expresar en primer lugar un especial saludo y el agradecimiento profundo a las organizaciones de sociedad civil que nos solicitara como solicitantes de esta, de esta audiencia, agradeciendo su presencia a esta audiencia. Igualmente, expreso un saludo a la ilustre representación del Estado de Surinam y agradecidas también por su comparecencia. Quiero explicarles una, la metodología que tenemos para el desarrollo de eh, la, la audiencia como el tiempo, la distribución. Le otorgamos a la sociedad civil 20 minutos, luego le pasamos la palabra al Estado para 20 minutos. La comisión, luego de sus presentaciones, interviene por ese mismo tiempo y luego le retornamos la palabra para escuchar sus comentarios finales a nuestras observaciones o preguntas que la comisión realice por un tiempo de 12 minutos. Quiero destacar el objetivo de la presente audiencia. La sociedad civil que nos ha solicitado la misma presentará información actualizada sobre la situación de los derechos de los pueblos indígenas tribales en Surinam. Y esto incluye los esfuerzos para proporcionar una base legislativa para los derechos en la legislación nacional y el desarrollo reciente en todos los sectores de la tala, la minería, las infraestructuras que perjudican o niegan los derechos de los pueblos indígenas y tribales. Sin más, bueno, no toque el timbre, lo toco ahora, damos inicio a esta audiencia y le doy de inmediato la palabra a las organizaciones de sociedad civil solicitándoles que al hacer uso de la palabra indiquen quién interviene, su nombre y la organización que representa a fines 
de nuestros registros. Muchas gracias y le paso la palabra. Sociedad Civil. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. My name is Fergus Mackay. I'm senior counsel for Indigenous Peoples' Rights International. Um, my other part-time job for the last 30 years has been representing Indigenous and tribal peoples in Suriname uh, before the Commission and the Court. Um, unfortunately, I'm still here today doing exactly the same thing. Um, when we were preparing for this hearing yesterday, should I stop? Un momentito que no tengo, no tengo traducción. Gracias. Está bien. Sí. Thank you. Um, let me start from the beginning. My name is Fergus Mackay. I'm senior counsel at Indigenous Peoples' Rights International. Um, for the past 30 years, I've represented Indigenous and tribal peoples in Suriname. Uh, first, in the case of Moiwana Village, then in the case of the Saramaka people uh, versus Suriname, and finally, in the case of the Kalinia and Lakono peoples uh, versus Suriname. Uh, these three cases um, all started off with facts that you're going to hear again today because the same situations are repeating over and over and over again uh, without any change. The first time I came to the Commission for a hearing on Suriname on these same issues was 1997. Today is 2024, 2023, as you know. It's been a long time. There have been three judgments of the Inter-American Court in that period as well, each of which found that Suriname has grossly violated the rights of indigenous and tribal peoples in that country, and that indigenous and tribal peoples are defenseless under domestic law. They have no rights in law, and they have no legal personality to seek enforcement for their rights before domestic tribunals. This situation persists today, despite those three judgments of the court. We acknowledge very much and commend the role of the commission in processing those cases and arguing them before the court. We greatly appreciate the commission's role. And we're here today to again ask for the commission's assistance in dealing with these issues. I'm cognizant that there's a line between what may be discussed at this hearing and the jurisdiction of the court to monitor its judgments. Uh, and I want to be very careful not to cross that line, particularly as we've requested a hearing before the court uh, on compliance with those judgments as well. So any reference to specific aspects of those judgments is solely for background uh, and context here. And I'm not asking the commission to have another go at what the court might do later on. Um, Suriname's lack of compliance with these judgments goes beyond disregard for the orders of the court. It extends to notorious and active violation of the letter and spirit of those judgments. I'll give you two examples here, and you'll hear others from my colleagues to the left, uh, who, despite the signs on our table, are traditional authorities of their communities. They're not civil society. They're part of indigenous and tribal people's governments in their communities. So the first example I'll give you is a series of mining concessions that have been issued in Saramaka territory, one to a Canadian multinational that includes 33 Saramaka villages. The court in 2018 found that that concession violated the terms of the judgment. Since that time, we found another 20 mining concessions that have been issued in Saramaka territory, comprising over 100,000 hectares. Uh, and those were issued between 2009 and 2013. There may be more, but we've not been able to identify them. In 2012, one mining concession was issued in the Saramaka village of Balingsula. The miners started operations in the residential area of that village, prompting extensive demonstrations from the community members who blocked the road uh, and sought to stop the operation. The miner brought case in the national court system against the state of Suriname for failing to protect his mining operation 
from the Saramaka. The judge upheld the rights of the minor and ordered the state to protect the minor from the Saramaka on whose land that minor was operating in direct contravention of the judgment of the court. At no time were the rights of the Saramaka raised in any of the proceedings by the state or anyone else or the judge. This was in 2021. You'll hear later today that in May 2023, two indigenous persons were killed in the village of Pikinsaron as they demonstrated that they're against taking of their lands for a concession and their exclusion from those areas by the concessionaire who told them they were not allowed to hunt, fish, or access the area. This prompted widespread demonstrations in the community and a police operation which involved the death of two persons. Five others are now in jail and they have been charged with terrorism in relation to uh, their protesting the taking of their lands. So the situation now today in Suriname has escalated from one where the rights of indigenous and tribal peoples are simply disregarded to one where violent situations are erupting and people are being killed. Why is this happening? This is happening because the state has yet to enact a law that recognizes that indigenous and tribal peoples have any rights whatsoever to their traditional territories. If it had had, neither of those situations I just mentioned would ever have occurred, or they would have occurred in very different circumstances. Again, I want to stress that indigenous and tribal peoples are 25% of the Surinamese population. When the commission adopted its merits report in the case of the Saramaka people in 2006, prior to sending that case to the court, the commission stated, and I quote, one major manifestation of racial discrimination has been the failure of state authorities to recognize customary indigenous and tribal forms of land possession and use, and that the denial of legislative protection for their rights reflects unequal treatment in the law." Close quote. The commission said that in 2006. That situation persists today, and it is racial discrimination against one out of every four citizens of the Republic of Suriname. The United Nations describes this as structural and systemic discrimination. The court and the commission have both urged Suriname, in the case of the court ordered Suriname, to adopt legislation to correct this situation. Yet in 2023, that legislation still has not been enacted. We acknowledge that there is legislation pending before the legislature, and it has been there since 2021. Yet every time it comes up for debate in Parliament, there's a last minute amendment or some other reason that that debate is delayed and it has yet to be enacted. The most recent reason for delay was a letter submitted by the Chamber of Commerce which maintained that recognizing indigenous and tribal rights would discriminate against the rest of the population of the country. Instead of summarily rejecting that, as the court did in its judgment in 2007, as the commission did after an on-site visit to Suriname in 2013, the state indulges such excuses and yet again delays enactment of the law. The situation persists. It has not changed. The state has, however, enacted a law that allows for the conversion of leasehold titles granted to third parties into ownership titles, including within indigenous and tribal villages, including two of those that were party to the Kalinia and Lakono people's case decided by the court in 2015. Those titles have now been converted to ownership rights within their villages, even though the law says this should not happen within indigenous and tribal territories. But those territories have yet to be defined there's nothing in the law of Suriname that says where they are or what rights anyone has to those territories. I mentioned earlier the first time I came here talking about this was in 1997. 
the situation not only is no better, it has got worse. While the state delays enacting the legislation that could recognize the rights of indigenous and tribal peoples, and indeed the legislation that's pending in part does so, even though it would do so incompletely, it would require enacting laws in order to complete that, the state has done nothing more than issue a plethora of resource extraction concessions in indigenous and tribal territories, again in direct contravention of the orders of the court, and pass laws that allow third parties to convert leasehold rights in indigenous and tribal territories into ownership rights that are much harder to expropriate for the purposes of restitution as ordered by the court in Kalinia and Lakona peoples. So we very much hope, one, that the commission will forthrightly support the views of the petitioners when they are in the hearing before the court when these matters arise. The commission previously has found that Suriname's acts and omissions contravene the judgment of the court in Saramaka people, and we hope that it would do so again forthrightly before the court. In relation to those who are being accused of terrorism for demonstrating the expropriation and taking of their lands and denial of their subsistence rights, we hope that the commission will write an Article 41 letter requesting information as to why they are being prosecuted for terrorism offenses when there is no reasonable relationship between those offenses and what happened in that situation. And we would hope that the Commission will very much question the state today as to what exactly are the obstacles to passage of the law that's been pending before the legislature for the past two years. Thank you. I yield to my colleagues who again are traditional authorities and whose voices are much more important than mine. Thank you. Greetings, honorable commissioners. My name is Samunda Yabini. I am from the youth from the, the Association of the Samaka Traditional <coughs> Authorities. I am a third generation human, Samaka human rights defender. And I stand here before you as uh, on behalf of the chief to speak for the tribal communities in Suriname. I was not even born yet when the Samaka people started this fight for our for the for the uh, the rights to their land, and uh, my ancestors also fought and uh, won their freedom from slavery over 250 years ago. Um, my grandfather was the first generation that started this fight for our land rights. After that, my dad took over and stood before this commission with a case that led to the Samaka judgment in 2007. And because of this case, he was also awarded a Goldman Prize in 2009. And now, in 2023, I have to stand here again to fight for the same rights. Um, the, draft, the draft land rights law in Suriname is still not adopted um, by the parla Parliament of Suriname. Instead of things getting better, it's only getting worse. Um, the Surinamese government implemented a a law, um, it, not so a few weeks ago, they implemented a land, a land conversion law, which went to in effect on the 1st of November. And this, this means that everyone, other people can, they can, can get, uh, they can get uh, ownership within our, our living areas. So we still face a lot of threats. We still face a lot of violation. And this is only happening because the government didn't adopt the, the, some, uh, the doesn't comply with the Samaka judgment. Our drinking water sources are being contaminated with dangerous chemicals like mercury and cyanide because um, they are being used in mining concessions that are in our, in our territory. And can you imagine if our drinking water are contaminated, what will happen with the fish and the animals and the people that are eating those? Because it, this is also part of our food sources. Another threat that we face is the deforestation, uh, which um, has increased since the judgment in 2007. Um, the women in our communities are face, still, still facing challenges with um, foreign invaders that are being, that are coming in our territory. Now we are facing one that is constructing a road through our pristine forest that was protected by our ancestors for centuries. 
Dear Commissioners, I am here to ask you, to ask the government of Suriname what the reason is why they can't comply with the judgment of the court. I am 30 years old. I wouldn't want, I don't want my children to come, to have to come here again to fight for the same cause. Thank you. Goedemiddag, uh, leden van de Inter-Amerikaanse Commissie van de Rechten van de Mens. Ik ben kapitein Silawin Alamjawari van het dorp Galibi in het oosten, een van de dorpen genoemd in het Kalinja in Lokonofonus. Er is heel veel dat mij van het hart moet. Alles heeft te maken met het belang van mijn volk. Ik zal enkele gevallen aangeven waarover ik en mijn volk ons zorgen maken. Kort geleden heeft de Surinaamse overheid de grondconversie in uitvoering gebracht middels een staatsbesluit en is sedert 1 november 2023 in werking getreden. Deze, deze wet gaat volledig tegen onze rechten in omdat we gevaar oplopen. Opdat anderen binnen onze woon- en leefgebieden eigendomsrechten zullen krijgen. De in, inwerking treding van deze wet besluit is tegen al hetgeen eerder was afgesproken. De afspraak was dat de wet grondrechten eerst zou worden behandeld en daarna zou de wet grondconversie worden behandeld die nog steeds bij het parlement ligt. Nu is juist het tegenovergestelde gebeurd. Geachte commissie leden. Wij worden niet serieus genomen en er, er wordt op ons neergezien. De Surinaamse overheid vindt het regelen van onze grondenrechten niet belangrijk. Kunt u als commissie van de regering vragen waarom deze rechten nog niet in de wet zijn opgenomen? Mijn volk weet dat de Surinaamse overheid ze niet serieus neemt. Op in volgende regeringen blijven uitgiftes doen binnen onze woon- en leefgebieden in de vorm van uitgiften van hout, mijnbouwconcensies aan stedelingen en buitenlanders. En de plaatselijke bewoners worden verboden om hun eigen gebied om te werken. Anderen van buitenaf komen je een les voorlezen. Daarom zijn intussen vertegenwoordigers van de stad en de dorpelingen. In deze strijd zijn twee van de strijders overleden. Deze mensen zijn vermoord omdat ze hebben gestreden voor hun rechten. Als onze rechten geregeld waren in een wet, zou niemand binnen ons gebied rechten kunnen ontlenen. Wat nog? Pijnlijker is, is dat diegenen die zijn opgekomen voor hun rechten ook nog zijn ingesloten en worden beschuldigd van terrorisme. Ziet u hoe erg het is geworden in Suriname? Zij vermoorden ons wanneer wij opkomen voor onze rechten. Geachte commissie, kunt u de stad hiervoor om verantwoording vragen? Good afternoon, <clears throat> members of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. I am Captain Selowin of the village of Galibi, one of the villages mentioned in the Kalina and Locono verdict. There's a lot that I need to get off my mind. All of this has to do with the interests of my community. I will point out several incidents that continue to worry me and my people. By state decree, the Surinamese government has recently implemented the land conversion law which will be in effect as of November 1st, 2023. This law goes completely against our rights. We will be in danger because others will gain ownership rights within our living areas. The entry into force of this decree 
is contrary to everything that was previously agreed upon. The agreement was that the Land Rights Act would be handled first, and only afterward would the Land Conversion Act be handled, which technically lies still before the Parliament. Now the exact opposite has taken place. Dear Commissioners, we are not taken seriously. We are looked down upon. Continue? Okay. <laughs> the Surinamese government does not consider it important to arrange for our land rights. As a commission body, can you ask the government why our rights have not yet been included in law? My community knows well that the Surinamese government does not take them seriously. Successive governments continue to grant logging and mining concessions to city dwellers and foreigners within our territory, with the result that local residents are banned from cultivating their own areas. Can you imagine that you have your own house, but you have no say or control in your own house? Instead, others come from outside and lecture you on what to do. That is why in May of this year, the young people of the village of Pekin Saron revolted in protest, leading to a standoff between villagers and representatives of the state. In this struggle, two of the protesters died. These people were murdered because they fought for their rights. If our rights had been regulated by law, no one from outside would be able to derive rights within our area. What is even more painful is that those who stood up for their rights have been detained and accused of terrorism. Do you see how dire the situation has become in Suriname? They murder us when we stand up for our rights. Dear Commission, can you keep the state of Suriname responsible for this? Muy bien. Bueno, eh, vamos a dejarle para la próxima intervención, porque el tiempo de los 20 minutos ha concluido. En la, en la siguiente intervención tendrá la oportunidad de, de, de presentar su, sus palabras. Le paso de inmediato ahora la palabra a la representación del Estado. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Commissioner, and all at the head table. Um, I'm offering uh, our greetings from Suriname and um, allow me to present to you the delegation of the Republic of Suriname attending today's hearing, a hearing that was is requested by uh, the uh, civil society here, uh, represented by uh, members of the uh, FITS, VSG Campus and IPRI. My delegate uh, comprises of three persons. Uh, my name is Roy Bainat Pandey, agent of state. Um, at my right hand, uh, we have Mrs. Marco Waterfall, the deputy agent of state. And at my left hand side, we do have Mrs. Annalise Ahuense in the position of secretary to the office of the agent of state. Um, Madam Commissioner, uh, yesterday we have submitted to your, to your office our written report, including several annexes. Today I will provide you with a summary of that report. Everything contained in that report is deemed to have been repeated here today Fabetum. On June 15, 2022, I formally commenced my mandate as agent of state. The methodology that is followed by my office has been to seek for all parties involved the most appropriate, uh, uh, the most appropriate approach to settle matters regarding alleged human rights violations. It is therefore that the state wishes to refer to the domestic remedies at the disposal of all who seek recourse in matters of contention. In line with Article 46 of the American Convention on Human Rights and Article 31 of the Rules of Procedure of the Inter-American Convention, 
the state encourages that the remedies, and I quote, the remedies under domestic law are pursued and exhausted in accordance with generally recognized principle of international law, and quotation. The state is convinced that on the national plane, the Surinamese judiciary is independent, competent, and objective and impartial in its hearing of cases of all litigants and therefore encourages that interventions be sought within the national sphere first. In compliance with the pronouncements issued by the Inter-American Court on human rights concerning collective rights of the indigenous and tribal people and with regards to logging and mining concessions, <laughs> as well as the infrastructure projects affecting indigenous and tribal people territories inter alia. And I will uh, mention two uh, 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 paragraphs. Uh, first, the operative paragraph 15 of the Saramaka people versus Suriname case, and I quote, the court shall monitor full compliance with this judgment in exercise of its attributes and in compliance with its obligation under the American Convention and shall, and shall close this case once the state has complied full, fully with its terms. And secondly, the operative paragraph 21 of the Kalinia and Locono people versus Suriname case, and I quote, the court will monitor full compliance with the judgment in execution of its authority and in compliance with its obligations under the American Convention on Human Rights and will consider this co case concluded when the state has complied fully with its provisions." And quotation. Uh, the state is bound to and will report to the Inter-American Court on Human Rights concerning the progress and challenges faced with implementing the uh, above mentioned judgments and as they relate to the collective rights of indigenous and tribal people and on the logging and mining concessions affecting the respective residential and living territories of the indigenous and tribal people. Considering the aforementioned and the importance of and the importance the state attaches to the full enjoyment of human rights by all under its jurisdictions <clears throat> and respecting the international and regional commitments in this regard, the state is keen on informing the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights of its following proposed issue as it has been presented by the civil society. And we have listed five uh, points, beginning with recent attacks against indigenous villagers, second, threats to use military force against a Samaka community opposing unwanted gold mining in their villages, three, unexplained flooding of villages related to discharges from the Afabaka Dam, four, the rampant and unregulated discharge of mercury and cyanide by miners operating in and around indigenous and tri tribal people lands and water across the country. And five, information concerning Suriname's participation in the Caribbean Reparation Commission without any attempt to seek indigenous and tribal people views. <clears throat> These five points, uh, Madam Commissioner, we have extracted from the documentation we have received from your commission as it was provided by the civil community. And we will respond as follows. With regard to the second, the first issue um, named recent attacks against indigenous villagers, uh, our response is as follows. With regard to this subject, the state observes that although no specific case was mentioned 
in the production as it was community communicated with your office. Um, it received as announcement and notification of this hearing, the state would like to take this opportunity to inform the commission of the progress made by the respective authorities in the investigation concerning the Peking Saron incident of May the 2nd, 2023. This incident is currently still under investigation and recently the magistrate's court closed its part of the investigation and submitted its findings to the Office of the Attorney General. Your esteemed commission will be informed of the outcome of the full investigation and the conclusion decision when it is made available by the respective authorities. <clears throat> the second issue um, relates to threats to issue military force against the Asamaka community opposing unwan unwanted gold mining in their village. We respond as follows, Madam Commissioner. The state is not aware of a formal report or otherwise of a threat related to the use of military force against any Saramaka or other community with regard to unwant unwanted gold mining in their village. The provided issue information is not specific, nor gives it us any link link to respond to this matter. Additional and specific information is needed from the petitioners regarding this subject, such as the name of the relevant community and the place and the date of any incident they are referring to. The third point is with regards to the unexplained flooding of villages uh, related to discharges from the Afobaka water dam. The hydroelectric electric works um, is located in the district of Brocopondo. The power dam was designed on the premise of being able to generate about 160 megawatts average hydropower to feed the Suralco Paranam aluminum smelter and alumina refinery, <laughs> whose operation goes back to the 60s. The Paranam operations was closed a couple of years ago, but still hydropower is generated. Spilling of water, Madam Commissioner, from the dam basin occurs when rarely due, very rarely due to abnormal rains. And with regards to the abnormality of rainfall, we would like to give you in general some insight. In general, Suriname does have four weather seasons. First, what is called the large dry season from mid-August to end November. Second season is, is called the small rainy season from December to the end of, the, of January. The third season is called the small dry season from February to mid-May. And the fourth season is called the large rainy season from mid-May to mid-August. Due to climate change, Suriname is also experiencing the negative of effects of this. In our written report, we have given a full expl explanation um, to you how water is accumulated in the hydropower reservoir and how the water levels are maintained and what critical uh, circumstances can lead to the decision to spill water. The first spilling, Madam Commissioner, of water goes back in the year 1990. And the second event for water spilling was in the year 2022. So you can see 1990 till the year 2022, uh, there was no 
uh, uh, um, event of, that gives reasons for spilling of water. In 2022, um, the intensive spill operation commenced on the 12th of April, April 2022 and lasted until mid-June 2022. Each spill operation with minimum, moderate, or intensive is announced, and I, I ask your attention for this um, paragraph, it is announced in advance to downstream communities. The communication protocol developed by the company Suralco in the 60s um, and adopted by the state oil power company Suriname is that the district commissioner is informed of on the upcoming spill event. It is the duty of the district commissioner to send his field personnel into the various, various villages to inform the communities. This procedure was also opted in the 2022 event of water spill. We would like to inform your esteemed commissioner that according to Suriname Geographical Infrastructure, the district commissioner is a government representative who, among other duties, actively communicates with his or her local community. This also was the case with regard to this event. Moreover, we can say that SPSC also made use of the good offices of the district commissioner. The water spill causes flooding on areas in the natural flood plains of the Suriname River. Houses and belongings of residents in the villages were seriously affected. The impact on a macro level was that all agricultural plots, recreational facilities, and homes situated in the nat natural flood plains of the Suriname River were flooded. On a micro level, several houses that were built in the river flood plains were flooded. The government responded to the flooding that resulted from the intensive spill operation through the National Coordination Center for Disaster Management called NCCR. The NCCR is the country's agency dealing with all kinds of operations to respond to incidents that affect people's lives. The NCCR is also one of the members of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management uh, Agency called CIDEMA. In mitigating the flooding effects, the NCCR provided the following to the affected communities. And I will um, name you uh, uh, four uh, initiatives, and we give a full and brief detailed um, um, we have described it in details in the report we have submitted to your office, um, Madam Commissioner. The four initiatives were temporary relocation of affected households, food packages for affected households, installation of drinking water tanks in the villages, supply of drinking water to the villages. The NCCR also work in close collaboration with the primary health care Suriname um, and focus on the full package of services, including a lot of um, uh, work that was um, executed, of which also a listing of almost 10 to 12 issues is fully described in the report we have uh, sub uh, sent, submitted to your office, Madam Commissioner. It is worth mentioning that the Suriname Power um, Company made a budget of US dollar 700,000 available for aid to the affected communities, of which US dollar 600,000 was spent in the year 2022 on the following. We have put a list and a very extensive list of what has been <laughs> undertaken to use this fund and to provide aid 
to the affected uh, people in, in the mentioned area. Uh, that amount to uh, a total of 600,000 US dollars. The remain uh, budget of uh, 100,000 US dollars was made available for the presidential working group re uh, with regards to development in the area of Brocopondo. I will give you some more detail on this uh, work of the presidential working group. In 2022, flooding of parts of the villages downstream of the Afabaka Dam gave rise to fierce uh, public debates. The question was posed whether the company exploring the dam has acted as a prudent operator towards and during the intensive spill operation. Subsequently, the Suriname Energy Authority initiated a technical review on the said uh, SPSA spills. The independent consultant by the name of Worley N. Haria Limited, world, uh, uh, named Worley from Brazil, was contracted to perform such a review. The Worley report concluded that the operational procedure carried out by the company of um, was very acceptable especially the decision by this, uh, the, 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 set, the, the company, as I have mentioned, to commence spill operations well before the operational maximum level of the reservoir was reached, demonstrated, and I quote, prudent practice by SPSC. If this was not done, a catastrophic incident, namely a water dam break, could occur, result, resulting in national catastrophe. For this reason, an immediate and prudent decision was taken, which due to the time sensitive nature prohibited the execution of a community inclusive approach. The state had to consider its responsibility in the widest context possible and was therefore left with no other options but to have a regular, a greater general safety and interest, including that of the local community. The state spared no efforts in assisting the affected communities <laughs> as illustrated earlier. The, the worldly report is also attached uh, in our documents uh, uh, forwarded to your office, uh, esteemed commissioner. Also, reports that has been generated uh, validating the report of early has been submitted. Uh, I, I may say on this topic that um, uh, learning from the lessons as, is, as the, this has been experienced gave reasons to the company um, to sit together with the local community and the government representative to set up a plan, uh, what is called a, um, a hydropower purchase agreement, uh, in order to uh, see for objectives, in order to allocate funds from the hydropower power sales and uh, to collect by, that, by this means uh, proceeds that can create a fund for, if it will be necessary, do uh, moderate to large compensation of affected households. I will leave it there because in our submission, we have provided you a detailed um, report on this issue. Um, the fourth uh, theme uh, is with regard to the rampant and unregulated discharge of mercury and cyanide by miners operating in Vamos. and around. Oh. Eh, el, el, el término de, del tiempo eh, para la, en la intervención siguiente quizás pudiera entonces hacer la conclusión porque ya eh, tiene dos, dos minutos eh, pasados de, de el tiempo y, y no solo es por, por, el, por la misma situación del tiempo, sino que 
tenemos que cumplir para poder tener el, el, el control de la propia audiencia. Así que mi, mis disculpas por eso, eh, señora gente. Eh, voy a pasar ahora a la siguiente parte de la audiencia para la intervención de la propia comisión y le voy a dar la palabra de inmediato al comisionado Carlos Bernal. Thank you so much, Madam President, for giving me the opportunity to uh, talk in this, in this hearing. I would like to thank you, to extend my gratitude to the petitioners for uh, coming to Washington, D.C. and uh, present this information and your views concerning this uh, com very complex uh, problem, and also to the honorable representative for, uh, of the state for being willing to engage in this, in this dialogue. Uh, let me start my remarks by, by uh, uh, saying that this uh, hearing is not a space in which we are here to find responsibility, uh, international liability of the state, or to declare that. Um, in, a, in addition, there have been a couple of judgments by the Inter-American Court in which this has been uh, acknowledged. but just to, to trigger or to catalyze transformation. I think the purpose of this hearing is to achieve some kind of compromise between the parties and some agreements and to trigger <laughs> or catalyze a conversation that leads to transformation. And in this spirit and taking into account the good faith of the petitioners and also of the state that is here, when in many hearings we don't have the state, they, they are not willing even to hear. Here we have a, a, a wonderful delegation from the state ready to engage in the, in the conversation. I would like to um, make some points uh, just as a point to begin the discussion that I hope can continue in Suriname, can continue in Suriname. So um, to the petitioners, I, I, I would like to, some, to make some remarks to the petitioners and then to some remarks to the, to the states. The first uh, remark to the petitioners is that, of course, this is a very deep historical and structural problem. Uh, and even concerning the implementation or, and compliance to remedies uh, is, is going to be hard. Why is that? Because uh, situations like these are not very easy to redress. And also, uh, they, are not, they are even more difficult to redress in a framework in which we have a democratic uh, constitutional government in which there is a, the rule of law and separation of powers. For instance, the, even if the government is here willing to say, right now I take seriously this judgment and from tomorrow I do this and this, many of those changes they need to go through parliament and uh, all of us know that the, that the uh, congressional he, uh, procedures take time they require deliberation, et cetera. That's my first, my first remark. Then the second point is that the, the problematic is, is so deep because it implies a collision between rights and interests. Of course, and this is going to be my next point to the state, uh, to the state uh, taking seriously and respecting the rights uh, first of uh, the rights to the territory of the Saramaka people is, is paramount. Second, the right to life and the health of the members of that community is paramount. Third, the right uh, to prior consultation in concerning projects in their territories is paramount. But also the state has other interests that has to, to respect, like for instance, uh, 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 administrative acts that grant the titles before. They have to respect the legi legitimate expectation of companies that have made some plans, uh, for, for instance, concerning infra infrastructure. 
I, it is my understanding that also uh, Suriname is party to some bilateral investment treaties and, and some uh, free trade agreements. And uh, arbitral panels can find Suriname international liable if they deprive those companies from the rights that are entrenched in those treaties. So the state is between two, between a rock and a hard place. Sometimes it is very difficult to to find a middle way to navigate those interests. In addition, the state has to comply and to respect the right of the, to, to environment. Uh, you were talking, for instance, the problem of deforestation, and uh, that is linked right now to the problem to the problem of mitigating climate change. So, in the the problem is is how is how to comply with those ju judgments in the middle of of that of that problem of that the problematic. Then my my point to the state is. We are aware of that, of that problem. But the respect of human rights of the petitioners should be a priority because they, they already have uh, some, uh, a couple of judgments by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. So there must be diligence as much as possible to the state in getting legislation passed and also regulations to comply with those judgments. Thank you so much, Madam President. Gracias, comisionado. Le, eh, le paso la palabra al relator para la libertad de expresión. Thank you, President. And first of all, I would like to, to thank your presence here about uh, civil society and state. Very impressive, this intergenerational uh, persistence of, of challenges. And, and uh, um, I hope this commission in this scenario could be part of, of the solution. As it, that we've tried to be for so long. I have a couple of questions, probably for the state, uh, because there's there's also a, a, an angle of prevention uh, in, during demonstrations. And, and I would like to, to ask you in the context of protests by indigenous people, indigenous groups, I would also like to inquire about actions taken by the state to prevent violence, safeguard people's safety, and maintain public order. I would, I would also like to ask the state about the measures implemented to ensure that the use of force adheres to principles of exceptionality, necessity, progressiveness, and proportionality. Uh, this, I mean, as a general question, but also focused on the recent events of May that were raised during this uh, hearing. Uh, and also, my second question is I also kindly ask for both parties to comment on the progress of dialogues, if any, uh, between indigenous associations and the state to fulfill this inter-American frame that has been discussed here. Thanks, uh, Madam President, for, for, for the opportunity. Gracias, Relator. La Secretaria Ejecutiva, Tania Renau. Gracias, Presidenta. Muy buenas tardes. I will speak in, in Spanish. Eh, muchas gracias. Eh, quiero agradecer mucho la información que nos han enviado recientemente la delegación del Estado de Surinam. La hemos recibido en la oficina para poderla analizar posterior a esta audiencia. Y también quiero agradecer mucho a las comunidades que hoy acompañan de manera distinta, de manera generacional, de man con la experiencia y con el conocimiento en primera persona de lo que está pasando. Eh, eh, al Estado a mí me gustaría comentarle que lo que estamos viendo en Surinam no es una situación excepcional, sino que es una situación que converge en toda la región y que está pasando en toda la región. Pero no por ello, no por su generalidad, resulta urgente plantearla y resulta urgente atenderla. Eh, a mí me parece que aquí en esta conversación ha habido una pregunta que es necesario responder. Más allá de todo el elemento técnico que afortunadamente el Estado nos ha enviado. Pero la pregunta que está en la conversación y que no se ha respondido es por qué no se ha cumplido con la sentencia de la Corte. 
y por qué hay un desentendimiento tan grande entre la expectativa que tiene la comunidad y lo que el Estado espera. Hemos sido testigos en otras experiencias en otros países, de mesas de conversación entre las comunidades y el Estado, en los que la Comisión Interamericana se pone a disposición. Y quisiéramos conocer si es del interés del Estado ponernos a disposición para poder tener una mesa de conversación entre las comunidades, entre la comunidad y el Estado, para llegar a un entendimiento sobre cómo cumplir una sentencia, sobre cómo poder eh, cumplir estándares básicos sobre contaminación del agua, sobre eh, land conversion laws, sobre por qué los derechos no están respetados. Probablemente comenzar la conversación tendría que ser el punto inicial y quiero decirle al Estado que estamos a disposición para, si así lo deciden, poder tener una conversación de esta naturaleza. Gracias de nuevo a la, a la comunidad que ha venido. Gracias porque usted, que es una defensora de tercera generación, conforme lo ha dicho, seguramente ha visto en su entorno el deterioro y también la falta de esperanza. Y qué bueno que pueda haber en la Comisión Interamericana una forma de generar esperanza o de generar conversación. No es nuestra intención, como ha dicho el comisionado Bernal, determinar la responsabilidad internacional del Estado, pero sí es nuestra intención generar una agenda positiva para la conversación y estamos aquí a disposición para ello. Gracias, Presidenta. Muchas gracias, eh, Tania. Eh, yo voy a, a hacer dos precisiones eh, en el... En el, en el Entendido de que comparto completamente la, la oferta que la secretaria ejecutiva le plantea a las partes para esta mesa de diálogo, cosa que reafirmo eh, como parte de la comisión. Eh, tengo dos puntos que han sido planteados por los peticionarios sobre... El primero es sobre el proyecto de ley, sobre los derechos colectivos. Eh, es un proyecto que tiene una trayectoria en el tiempo, es un proyecto que está eh, pensado precisamente como una fórmula de respuesta para poder asegurar el tema de la titularidad de los territorios, tener ese reconocimiento de los derechos en, en, en materia normativa que, que permita, que facilita eh, la, la, la actuación o las respuestas de, del Estado como se han planteado por parte de la representación del Estado. Y, y, y la petición de, los, de, de la sociedad civil lo que nos dice es, eh, teniendo una, una, una ley este reclamo de los derechos colectivos de los pueblos indígenas y tribales pueden garantizarse, pueden, pueden realmente tener eh, la vía para una respuesta. Entonces, ¿cuál es efectivamente hoy el, el, el obstáculo, los obstáculos para que ese proyecto de ley aún no se alcance su aprobación? Y el otro punto, también muy puntual de la presentación de la sociedad, hubo un momento en que se dicta ahora una nueva normativa, eh, eh, establece, puse la fecha pero ahora no, 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 la, no la ubico, de la conversión de algunos terrenos que están en las comunidades de estos pueblos, donde, en, en las tierras de estos pueblos y que al convertirlos en una posibilidad de a, adquirir propiedad sobre ellos, hay personas distintas a las pro, de las comunidades, distintas a los, a los propios eh, indígenas o pueblos tribales, eh, adquirirlas, adquirirlas con una titularidad de forma tal que ya no hay una posibilidad entonces sí de revertirlo. 
precisamente porque están titularizados por esta normativa, no sé si es eh, ley o es una normativa especial, de la conversión de los terrenos de los cuales precisamente la sociedad está demandando que esta ley, este proyecto de ley, se alcance para tener la posibilidad de la titularización de los territorios para los propios pobladores eh, de, la, de, de, de esas áreas de la región. Entonces, eh, en, en, en esos puntos muy específicos, atendiendo precisamente todo lo que se ha planteado por parte del Estado en, en materia de acciones, de respuestas que se han tenido directamente a determinadas problemáticas. Eh, quisiera eh, tener el, el, la oportunidad de, de hacerle un, este, este reconocimiento a la... A la a los solicitantes de la audiencia, primero ver a, a, a esta tercera generación eh, empoderada de lo, del reclamo de sus derechos, de la historia ancestral en la que efectivamente eh, reconoce la necesidad de mantener estas luchas, de, de desarrollar todas las acciones que sean necesarias dentro de este ámbito de la paz, de la colectividad, del diálogo para la defensa de los derechos. Pero también escuchar el, el, el reclamo de, de los conocedores en, 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 viva, en viva voz, pero también de sus historias de vida, es realmente eh, muy gratificante poder desde la Comisión Interamericana expresarles nuestro compromiso de trabajar en la búsqueda de, de, esas, de esos puentes de comunicación que permitan buscar eh, los, los acuerdos, las fórmulas de dar una, una respuesta eh, y, y de manera que podamos el, el, el tema del cumplimiento de las, de las sentencias de la Corte tiene, la, la, eh, lo decía el, el representante, no es para entrar aquí a una consideración de, de, de responsabilidad, pero sí de la Comisión puede hacer con, junto con el Estado esa revisión de aspectos claves que en las decisiones que se tengan como recomendaciones o mandatos para cumplir, eh, podamos participar y buscar también mecanismos de, eh, de apoyo, de entendimiento para, para, su, para su solución. Y, y concluyo la intervención con, con este pedido eh, de, 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 de identificar obstáculos y ver si nosotros podemos coadyuvar en la búsqueda de caminos de entendimiento y de, y de diálogo. Eh, para continuar entonces les voy a dar la palabra de retorno y, y poder escuchar sus comentarios finales y permítanme antes de, de pasarles la palabra, no quería dejarlo para el cierre, eh, para darle la, la bienvenida Aquí tenemos la presencia de la, la comisionada que entrará en, en sus funciones en el próximo año, Gloria Monique. Muchas gracias por estar aquí y, y poder compartir con nosotros este espacio en la audiencia. Muy bien, entonces le paso la palabra a la sociedad civil y no sé si le vamos a dar unos minutitos al... El, el, la persona que no pudo hacer uso de la palabra con ustedes o, y enseguida las, los comentarios finales. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be very brief. Um, my, my sense of déjà vu 
being here is even bigger now. Uh, that the state is suggesting that people need to exhaust domestic remedies. The commission, the court, six times have found there are no available and effective domestic remedies under the laws of Suriname. The people sitting here with me today would love to be able to exhaust domestic remedies. That's why they want a law enacted in Suriname. They want their rights protected under the law of Suriname. So just like any other Suriname citizen, they can go to court and enforce their rights when they're not being respected. They don't want to come here. I don't want to come here. It's cold, it's expensive, et cetera, et cetera. They want to do this at home. That's why they want a law done. And for the state to sit there and suggest that they should have somehow exhausted domestic remedies, I'm sorry, it, it beggars belief. It really does. If you read the judgments of the court, they went law by law in Suriname, explaining why they're ineffective, why they're unavailable. The biggest reason being, indigenous and tribal peoples have no legal personality. They're invisible under the law of Suriname. They have no standing to raise collective rights before the judiciary. You saw what happened when a minor took the government to court. The court ordered the state not to protect the Saramaka people, to protect the minor. If the state would like information on this, I suggest the newspaper has considerable amount of information, including four ministers who made public statements about it. No one's asking you to determine liability here. That's been done three times already. We very much hope the commission will forcefully make that point before the court, should the court grant the hearing, and we look forward to having this conversation with the court where it's appropriate. That said, as was mentioned, the commission does have a mandate to monitor the general human rights situation in Suriname that is not connected to those judgments of the court. And we encourage it to do so both in its final press release of this session, expressing deep, profound concern that these matters are still persisting unabated, 10 years after the orders of the court have expired in the judgment, the latest judgment, 10 years. Yes, some of these matters are complicated. They're not that complicated. The other states of this hemisphere have figured out at least how to make a law about this stuff. Why is Suriname the exception? It's not. 10 years ago, the orders of the court expired. Not the notification of the judgment, the deadlines imposed by the court expired 10 years ago. But the state would like to talk about whether domestic remedies have been exhausted or not. I, I, I really don't know what to say about that one. We would also very much encourage the commission to request information about these terrorism charges that are being uh, brought against these people, unreasonably again, uh, without any uh, rational basis for imposing such charges, uh, and to do so formally through an Article 41 letter. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll stop there. I think that's enough. Thank you. Hacer más uso del tiempo. Tienen ocho minutos. Sí. Goedemiddag, commissieleden. Ik ben kapitein Gunter Jona. Voorzitter van de Kalinia Lokonde Organisatie en Benito Marwene. Uh, de staat blijft maar gronden uitgeven in onze gebieden. Elke keer moeten we vernemen dat er weer gebieden zijn uitgegeven binnen ons woon- en leefgebieden. De dorpen Alfons Dorp langs de Oost-Westverbinding, weer konden er langs de Marwene Rivier, dorpen die genoemd zijn in het Kalinia Lokonde van ons. Men heeft geen respect voor ons. Men luistert niet naar ons. We ervaren discriminatie. En dat is een vorm van, ook een vorm van mensenrechten schendingen. Onze gronden, rechtenproblematiek, worden als politiek propaganda gebruikt. Wij hebben onze kinderen en kleinkinderen. En we vechten al jaren voor de erkenning van mijn volk. 
iedere wil een, een positieve ontwikkeling voor hun nageslag. Wij lopen de kans op dat onze kinderen een vorm van discriminatie ook zullen ondervinden. Wij willen dat onze kinderen de strijd moeten aangaan. De strijd maakt vielen van ons en treft ons diep. Omdat onze kinderen en kleinkinderen het gevaar lopen in angst en pijn te leven. Als onze rechten worden erkend en de wet wordt aangenomen, zal er rust en ontwikkeling en welvaart zijn. Kunnen we rustiger slapen en hoeven we niet langer in angst en twijfel te leven. Mensen zijn moedeloos geworden en moe. En probeer op erkenning omdat we de staat eerder internationaal hebben aangeklaagd. De staat is veroordeeld, maar de staat onderneemt geen enkele stap voor de uitvoering. We zijn niet beschermd. Geachte commissieleden, help die ons tegen dit onrecht dat ons tot heden wordt aangedaan. Kunt u de staat vragen waarom ze niet uitvoeren wat hem is opgelegd? Al onze rechten in een wet waren op, als onze rechten in een wet waren opgenomen in het vonnis van het Inter-Amerikaans inter Hof, daar behoren was uitgevoerd, zullen eerder genoemde gevallen of calamiteiten niet hebben plaatsgevonden. Dank u wel. I will not translate. <coughs> The state continues to give out land in our areas. We constantly have to find out that more areas have been given out within our homes and habitats. The villages of Alfonsdorp and Pierre Condre. These were the same villages that were mentioned in the Caliña and Locono judgment. People don't listen to us anymore. They don't respect us anymore. We were discriminated against. Discrimination is a form of human rights violation. I have children and grandchildren, and I have been fighting for me and my people for longer than they have been alive. Everyone wants to leave good things behind for their children. We run the risk that our children will also have to experience this form of discrimination. I don't want my children to have to fight this struggle. This struggle wears us down and affects us deeply because our children and grandchildren are in danger of living in fear and pain. If our rights are recognized and the law is passed, we can sleep more peacefully and no longer have to live in fear. We are despondent and tired because we have already denounced the state internationally. The state has already been convicted, but the state is not taking any steps forward. We are not protected. Dear commission members, please help us reverse this injustice that we have suffered to this day. Can you please ask the state why they are not carrying out what they have been ordered to do? If our rights had been written into law and the judgment of the Inter-American Court had been properly implemented, these aforementioned in incidents would not have occurred. Muchas gracias. Vamos a darle la palabra. A, ¿Iba a hablar usted algún, algo? Sí. Bueno, tiene tres minutos. Ay, déjeme un deno. Mi nerica y capte petrici, Stephen, usamaca. Usamaca nengue, capitini. No, ukua kitide. No, me abigila su di utaki. Di mi mofus, ay fosu camia. No me tala di come si tangi, fudi de abi respeki, utona hui, haika hui, fu chakagi, koda de mo. No me tala de tangi, a paiti, a infasinale. No me tala de abi hiasun de utaki, en hedi muye mi aki, en ucha, en bim chenko aki bi afan, tadi ubigi, fan kudi, ti, usana lanti, tabe de seka, de letifu, di matufu, ne utalibi. Di wata fua matu heu ta bebe. No, heu ta fanku di atele ki ubi kwa ki umeni pasika. No, di mi aki abi wabi palen u tianga no di ase ka son fueti. No, mta haki si di komesi, di de tele speki, si no ku uti de, mi haki si de baka, 
ta be de fanku di lanti o sana dao ta be de se ka di weti be de be weti fu bu ta sana buku be de abe respecte dao ga tangi fu no i greet you honorable commissioner my name is captain petrus stephen i'm a samaka leader in the first place i want to thank you to take the opportunity to listen to us for, for the, to give us the opportunity to present our case again. I don't have a lot to say, but I just want to acknowledge the fact that I took this young <coughs> Samaka lady with me to present you the same thing we came here a few years ago to present to you. And I want to ask you to ask the government of Suriname, the state of Suriname, to recognize our rights, to give us the right to manage our territory. So for me, I'm grateful that you give us this opportunity again. And we do hope that when we leave this room today, we don't have to come here again because it's now the time to take action. That's what the chief, chief, chief has said. But my name is Yuho Yabini, and I, I really want to, to add some point. We have listened to the government, the, their, their contribution, and uh, we are happy with the offer of the commissioner to, to talk, to sit on table to discuss this issue. Because we don't totally agree with what is presented here today. And we really are interested in the report so that we can see regarding the flooding of the Brokopona area. We heard here $600,000 that was made available for the Brokopona people after the flooding. And when we went there, speak with our people, the only thing we, we, we had heard is that the state of the company uh, offer some people, selected people from communities, 25,000 asadi. It's not even $700. And Brokopono people, if, if this $600,000 was given to the people, then I guess so, these people can get at least $2,000 dollar per person, but that's not the case. So we, we are very confused with this number and that 100,000 was reserved for the cabinet of the president. But we want to, we want to discuss this uh, with them and to see how we can find a solution because we are not fighting against the state. We are fighting for our rights, that our rights get recognized. Thank you. Gracias, gracias. Le paso la palabra al Estado. Thank, thank you, Madam Commissioner, um, and all sitting at the head table, all the commissioners and uh, the lady from the Secretariat. Let me first uh, make this point. Um, our report in writing and our oral report today, uh, we have um, uh, drafted and prepare it according to the document that has been filed with your office, madam. And that was submitted to Suriname through the uh, channel of the embassy to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, coming finally in, on, on our table, and we have responded. So today, uh, I may say that um, the Council of the Village People uh, highlighted other areas also of which we are not able to reflect on based on the fact that this, the, these points the council has addressed today were not part of the f document that has been filed with your office, Madam Commissioner. That's this one observation. And in my presentation, I made a point that we should uh, like to see more 
detailed information so that we can give further clarity on the position of the state uh, in, in further settings. Um, let me secondly say that um, we are listening to you, Madam Commissioner, and, um, and uh, Madam, uh, and I do hope that I can pronounce the name correctly, Madam Pansi has um, made the offer to see if there is a role, a vital role for the commission to facil facilitate the dialogue. And um, as representative for the government, we welcome that initiative. We would very happy see that, um, and I, I underscore the words of Mr. Yabini, uh, we are not sitting across each other. We will sit together and your inter inter intervention will help to have a sound uh, area, a sound, a sound climate, I may say, for a fruitful dialogue in order to solve what is called a problem. Yeah. But to say that, Madam, Madam uh, Commissioner, in our full written document that has been provided to your office, we mentioned that at least in the last couple of months, the government has initiated two consultation mechanisms, two. One is um, called the uh, 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 consultation mechanism created with representative of the traditional authority of Brocopondo, including entrepreneurs, non-governmental organization, all who are active working in the area of the district of Brocopondo. And all these are members of what is called the presidential working group. This working group has been established to um, collect all the issues that need attention and if these issues are also problem areas to reach an agreement how to bring um, um, uh, decisions in order to execute um, what is needed to uh, so, uh, solve these problems. That is one. Secondly, there is what is called um, an, an as uh, an, an mechanism um, with, uh, in which two um, um, representative organizations uh, are included, and that is the Association of Indigenous Village Heads in Suriname, one. Second, uh, the, the Maroon Foundation named A Maroon Compass, both are sitting in a, also a presidential commission, um, and this is this has been uh, created in March third, twenty twenty three. So these uh, mechanisms are to identify areas that are giving concern that has to be addressed and in which the government should take proper initiative to solve the problems. Um, Madam Commissioner, let me say that uh, after commencing this office in, what was it, in uh, June 2022, yes. in writing we invite the um, organization uh, FITS, the Indigenous v uh, Village Heads in Suriname, the association, I may say, and we ask them to come together with us in order to sit together, not only to present ourselves, but to listen and in which way we can sit together, communicate, and make a listing of first things to do. And we had that meeting in the month of November, the third week of November, 2022. Um, and we agree that we will have further meetings Although we asked for further meetings, these meetings were 
we haven't got positive res response to continue. So I I'm not putting this, this issue forward as that there is no willingness. I don't know what is the reason. But let me say that we sincerely welcome your um, initiative for a dialogue. <laughs> and um, we will um, uh, do everything what is needed at our part to see how we can, uh, with your uh, initiative for that dialogue, to come uh, to rounds of consultation with all my colleague, uh, fellow members, uh, people of Suriname, with their council, and I'm in agreement. We are now almost 10 years ago. We should solve what are the decisions of the court. And all the interventions of your commission, we will deem it very necessary to go uh, along it and to make uh, good steps in solving all the problems. Thank you, Madam uh, Commissioner. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, bueno, eh, hemos eh, concluido para eh, la, esta audiencia señalando, quisiera señalar el, el, como, como un resultado positivo esta propuesta de, de apertura al diálogo, de incluir a las organizaciones que han estado en el día de hoy eh, presentes. Es un, una responsabilidad que desde la Secretaría Ejecutiva seguro estaremos en, en una coordinación con, con los puntos focales que ustedes hayan podido eh, tener en, en, en la preparación incluso de la, de la propia, de esta audiencia y poder darle una, una continuidad, lo que sería para, para tanto, y, y es lo que recojo en este momento final de la audiencia, tanto para el Estado como para los peticionarios de la audiencia, este camino de, 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 de hojas de ruta que nos pudieran ayudar al Estado, al cumplimiento de las sentencias, la búsqueda de soluciones para los peticionarios, la consolidación de sus derechos en, esa, en esos instrumentos normativos que son los que efectivamente eh, pueden utilizar para su reclamo. Entonces, eh, es un camino que se inicia desde, desde, bueno, sé que hay, hay, eh, es previo también, pero que en esta oportunidad me complace señalar que como resultado de nuestra audiencia pudiera abrirse ese camino de diálogo. Muchísimas gracias y damos por terminada esta audiencia.